you have said from the beginning that that massacre had to be responded to, that Israel had to invade. But now it's been 100 days. It's 23,000 Palestinian civilian lives, according to reports. The hostages, 134 hostages, six Americans included, have been there for all this time. Things have changed. Doesn't Israel now have to wind this down? Isn't that what you want? Well, we all want to see this conflict end as quickly as possible. We all want to see the suffering uh, of people who are caught in the middle end as quickly as possible. Um, it's vital that Israel be able to do everything possible to ensure that October 7th never happens again. And it's made good progress toward that, uh, toward that objective. That was an embarrassing and borderline incoherent attempt by Secretary Blinken to try to justify Israel's ongoing genocide in Gaza, which he supports, by the way, hence why he's trying to justify it. And I mean, how exactly are they closer to ensuring another October 7th never happens again? What does that even mean? They have slaughtered 23,000 people, nearly 10,000 of which are children, by the way, and the remaining Gazans who survived their indiscriminate bombing campaign, who have lost everything, including family members, are going to be more susceptible to radicalization than ever before. So it seems to me that they're no more capable of preventing this now than they were on October 6th, because so much more people hate them because of what they're doing in Gaza. And when he says that they've made good progress towards that goal, he's just lying. I mean, assuming that their goal was to eliminate Hamas and not the Palestinian people altogether, there's a reason why they haven't done that yet, contrary to what he's saying here. And as Ishan Tharoor of the Washington Post explains, Hamas is entrenched and difficult to defeat. Even after waging one of the most intense heavy military campaigns in recent history, Israel has only neutralized a fraction of the militant group's armed strength. And in the process, it has ravaged the embattled territory where Hamas has held sway, displaced close to 90% of the population, flattened whole neighborhoods, triggered a sprawling humanitarian disaster, and found itself flailing in a losing battle for global public opinion. So explain to me again how they're closer to that goal, Blinken. They're not. He's full of shit. But it gets worse because he tries to give us some optimism that things are getting better currently, if you could believe that. He actually says this, by the way. Uh, but as he says this, he's leaving out a crucial, crucial component to what's happening in Gaza. You say they've made significant progress, but yet an, an important minister, Gallant, said they are about to attack Khan Yunus in the south very strongly. And there are people there who haven't even been moved back to the north. So we've seen now a phase down of the operations in the north. Uh, that's important. We've seen the uh, withdrawal of a significant number of forces, of Israeli forces that were in Gaza, uh, particularly again in the north, uh, where they've uh, achieved a lot. And as I said, we want to see this conflict come to an end as quickly as possible, uh, consistent with Israel's objective of making sure that October 7th doesn't happen again. Spoken like a true NPC that's incapable of deviating away from his scripted dialogue tree. Just insufferable. And I cannot take the gaslighting. Now, it'd be one thing if the fighting stopped altogether in the north and Gazans were able to return to their homes. But what is there to return to? He doesn't address this. They have nothing to go back to because what's left is uninhabitable, as the UN's humanitarian chief put it. Quote, currently in Gaza, infectious diseases are spreading rapidly with little to no clean water in the region. While there are only a few doctors left at the few hospitals that are still open and medication and medical supplies are extremely scarce. Hospitals are only able to respond to the worst and most horrific emergencies with over 10 children having to have one or both legs amputated on average every day, often without anesthesia. 
Food is extremely scarce in Gaza due to Israel's blockade of food and destruction of agricultural land. Quote, famine is around the corner, Griffith said. A recent UN-backed report by global food researchers found that the entire population is currently facing an acute hunger crisis, while the entire population will be facing famine in the next six months if Israel's starvation campaign continues. But according to Blinken, you know, everything is fine. It's going to be okay because the fighting has stopped in the north and um, they can go back home now to rubble and dirt and diseases. It's just, it's so hard to hear these details and not feel furious when you hear the way that the Biden administration is trying to justify this. This is a genocide, full stop, funded by our tax dollars. And if Israel doesn't kill them directly with bombs, Gazans may die indirectly due to starvation and a lack of potable water also inflicted by Israel. Because remember, they're the ones in control of the water supply in Gaza. Minister Gallant announced collective punishment at the start of this siege. And despite all of these facts, members of the Biden administration are pretending as if they're not privy to the same information that we're all privy to. They're pretending as if they don't see the same videos that we all see. And to make matters worse, members of Biden's administration is dismissing South Africa's genocide case against Israel at the ICJ. Case in point. As you know, the, uh, you dismissed a few days ago the case that brought by South Africa against Israel at the ICJ. Did you read the indictment? And if you did, do you believe that cutting off water, electricity, and fuel on a civilian population does not constitute a war crime by itself? Nothing else? Yes, I read the indictment. And as I said, and I, we stand by what we, what we said about this, we find it without merit. And we found, find it counterproductive. And I'll leave it there. We believe the submission against Israel to the International Court of Justice distracts the world from all of these important efforts. And moreover, the charge of genocide is meritless. It's particularly galling, given that those who are attacking Israel, Hamas, Hezbollah, the Houthis, as well as their supporter Iran, continue to openly call for the annihilation of Israel and the mass murder of Jews. Brilliant, big brain logic there. See, even though Israel is currently literally in the process of annihilating Palestinians in Gaza as we speak, well, Hezbollah and the Houthis say that they want to annihilate Israel. Therefore, they're the same thing. He acts like we're children, like we're not going to question what he says. And a lot of people will take what he says as if it's the gospel. But people with brains can see that he is lying. And furthermore, saying something is one thing, but doing something is an entirely different thing. Israel is doing the annihilation. Israel is doing the genocide right now. So regardless of what these other actors say they want to do to Israel, Israel is the one that is doing the thing that is bad right now that you are supporting. And as infuriating as it is to see the U.S. just dismiss South Africa's legitimate claim of genocide against Israel, it's not surprising because of course they're going to say that because they're not merely defending Israel by dismissing this case. They're defending themselves as well because, of course, they are just as culpable as Israel here. Not only does the U.S. supply them with the bombs that they drop on the heads of children in Gaza, but they also provide them with cover on the U.N. Security Council and gaslight all of the public at Israel's behest, as you're seeing in this video. Former President Mike Pence even signed bombs Israel fired into South Lebanon. So, I mean, this is our doing. We're, we're part of this now. So if Israel were to be held accountable by the international community, they won't be. The U.S. would also have to be held accountable as well as a co-conspirator, but that's not going to happen either. But the Biden administration is facing at least a minimal level of accountability in terms of him having to defend his administration's actions here, or I should say inaction to a degree. But again, we're participating fully. But as Prem Thacker of The Intercept explains, in late December, 77 groups representing tens of thousands of lawyers, civil society leaders, and activists from six continents filed an amicus brief in a lawsuit that Palestinian human rights organizations, residents of Gaza, and U.S. citizens with family members impacted by Israel's ongoing assault brought against the Biden administration. In the amicus brief, which is an avenue for groups not directly involved in a lawsuit to give the court information 
information to consider in its ruling, the organizations argue that the plaintiffs established that a genocide or serious risk of genocide of Palestinians in Gaza is occurring. They also argue that the U.S. is violating its duties under international law to prevent and not be complicit in genocide, and that those U.S. failures contribute to the erosion of long and widely held norms of international law, including the Genocide Convention and Universal Declaration of Human Rights, both established in 1948 in the wake of World War II. The lawsuit is headed for a hearing in the U.S. District Court for the Northern District of California later this month. Meanwhile, in an 84-page complaint brought by South Africa, Israel faces charges of genocide at the International Court of Justice at The Hague. Now, I wish I could tell you that I'm optimistic that these cases will bring justice, but I'm not, because even if justice prevailed in the best-case scenario here, there still isn't going to be justice. Hell, even if Biden was literally found guilty of complicity with Israel's war crimes, nothing is going to come of that. Because in this country, we will go to the greatest lengths imaginable to protect our war criminals. And I say this because, as journalist Abby Martin points out, Bush passed the law known as the Hague Invasion Act, which says the U.S. can invade the Netherlands to prevent American personnel from being charged with war crimes. Yeah. And even in the absence of this law, uh, I still don't expect any U.S. war criminals to ever be held accountable for anything ever. Because, I mean, if Henry Kissinger died without seeing a single day in prison, then U.S. officials can basically get away with anything, including literal mass murder. But that's not to say that Biden isn't being held accountable because he's already paid a large political price. Polls currently show that he is losing to Donald Trump in head-to-head matchups, which is terrifying. And currently, everywhere he goes, he is reminded that he has blood on his hands. Case in point. If you really care about the lives lost here, then you should honor the lives lost and call for a ceasefire in Palestine. Ceasefire! 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 That's all right. 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 I understand their passion, and I've been quietly working. I've been quietly working with the Israeli government to get them to reduce and significantly get out of Gaza, I'm using all that I can to do. He's trying so hard, yet he bypassed Congress to sell Israel more weapons that he knows they're going to use on innocent civilians, including journalists. And on that note, human rights groups like Freedom House, for example, don't think he's doing enough to address Israel's assassination and targeting of journalists. Because predictably, his administration is pretending like there's no evidence that Israel is targeting journalists. And that is incredibly deceitful, but it's not surprising because the stance of this administration is is to play dumb. Pretend like you don't actually know what's happening or pretend as if, you know, people are just being a little bit too hyperbolic here with the evidence that they're seeing. Playing dumb has been their strategy this whole time, and that's not going to change. Now, Biden's liberal defenders defend him by pretending as if he's hopeless in this situation and there's nothing that he can do. But that is factually incorrect. Republican administrations, as immoral as they are, have literally done more to rein in Israel's brutality than Biden has done. As Shrita Parsi explained in an op-ed for The Nation, quote, in 1982, President Ronald Reagan was, quote, disgusted by Israeli bombardment of Lebanon. He stopped the transfer of cluster munitions to Israel and told Israeli Prime Minister Manashim Begin in a phone call that this is a holocaust. Reagan demanded that Israel withdraw its troops from Lebanon. Begin caved. 20 minutes after their phone call, Begin ordered a halt on attacks. So ask yourself, 
why won't Biden do the same thing that Reagan did? Why won't he just pick up the phone and tell them to stop? It's because he doesn't want to. That's why we call him Genocide Joe. He's not just getting strung along begrudgingly by Israel. He is a willing participant in their ethnic cleansing and genocide of the people of Gaza. He is culpable. He has blood on his hands. He is a war criminal. But even though he's still currently in the driver's seat, that could soon change if he doesn't meaningfully reign in Israel. Because as Akbar Shahid Ahmed argues in the Huffington Post, Biden's continued support of Israel risks the U.S. getting pulled into a broader conflict in the region if Israel's actions in Lebanon end up pulling in Iran or other countries. And I mean, if that happens, this will spiral out of control even more and all but guarantee his defeat in November because Americans don't want to see another war. And that means that if he loses, Trump is going to take over as commander in chief and pour gasoline on the fire lit by Israel and things will get exponentially worse fast. It's just such a hopeless situation here because the American people are saying one thing and politicians are all collectively choosing to just ignore what they want. And who cares if the American people were in support of this. Like, it doesn't matter what public opinion says. Genocide is wrong, period. Like, we shouldn't have to gauge where the population is at when it comes to the mass slaughter of civilians. They should just not do it because killing is fucking bad. I mean, Jesus Christ. I, I just, it's so frustrating. And it feels gross to even talk about genocide in the context of, oh, well, I wonder how this is going to affect Biden's presidential prospects. But I mean, you would think that Biden's ambivalence towards the suffering of innocent Palestinians would not extend towards his electoral prospects. But he genuinely seems uninterested and even trying to win back the people who he's lost who are outraged about his genocide in Gaza. But I mean, regardless of how this pans out, one thing is clear. The Biden administration's gaslighting of Americans is not working, and I expect him to continue to be ride or die with Israel and continue to gaslight us. But I mean, just stop. If you're going to keep doing this, stop lying to us, because the people who support you, they're going to support you no matter what, even if you stop feigning concern for Gazans that you're supporting the slaughter of. Just stop. Drop the pretense that you're concerned about civilian casualties because you're not. And I say that because that's what your actions dictate. You might say some really nice things and maybe caution Israel publicly that they should be a little bit more careful while not actually looking at what they're doing and seeing the evidence. But your actions are what I care about. And that tells me you don't give a shit. Oh, man.